Welcome to this video on problem formulation and gap spotting, which is part of our series on conceptualizing research. In this video, I just want to extend the discussion on research problems and knowledge gaps a little bit further. Identifying a research problem to focus on is really a difficult process because problems are always interlinked and complex because the real world is interlinked and complex. So what I would suggest is, as a starting point is to create a concept map and brainstorm all the problems related to your research topic. Then select the ones that interest you and begin to think about them and question them, each one in turn. There's a tendency to latch onto any problem just because this process is so difficult. And that can lead to problem closure. So what I'm suggesting is that we really need to think about the research problems we've decided to focus on. So problem closure is when the way a research problem is defined prevents alternative ways of thinking about the problem. So if we use the example I've, I've used in the previous vid video, um, where I set up a problem around mature students returning to studying, you know, what we could question here is whether I've closed off the discussion by using the label mature students which sets up the project with a certain set of established assumptions. So problem, problem closure would be f not questioning that those assumptions. So many of us draw our research problem from published research, and this can perpetuate existing assumptions in a field. So really what I'm suggesting here is that you need to question. You need to question field-related assumptions. You need to question conceptual assumptions, and you need to question broader ideological assumptions. I mean, that's if you want an innovative and original problem. So as you begin working on the problem, keep questioning until you are satisfied that you've unpacked your assumptions and that you've articulated a particular problem that you really want to research. A similar problem can occur with the knowledge gap. Again, the knowledge gap is cognitively complex and we can easily write little is known about this problem. But by doing this, we don't question the range and variety of possible knowledge gaps within bodies of literature. And perhaps the gap also um, is about assumptions the literature is based on. So then this type of gap spotting where we quickly latch onto nothing is known can reinforce existing ideas rather than critically questioning them. So here are some ways to think differently about the knowledge gap. So this is a, an extension of the little is known. The literature does not sufficiently address an issue but you can think about it in terms of the context or the population or um, the, you know, perhaps there's no empirical support or a particular method hasn't been used. So extend the little is known and just add a little bit uh, more nuance and complexity. Certain aspects of the literature may have been neglected, but some may also be wrong or have moved in the wrong direction. Now, of course, you have to be very careful about stating that the literature is wrong um, and you would need evidence to prove this, but you could argue that it's moving in the wrong direction. Drawing conclusions between research not typically cited together as evidence of a gap. This could be where you work in a field with subfields and perhaps the literature in one field can provide insight onto another field.
creating links across disagreements and debates in the literature. So this is finding a way forward amongst debates. Um, that would be a very useful knowledge gap to do research on. Confusion or competing explanations in the literature as a gap and trying to find a way through that would also be very interesting. Applications of a new theory, method or material that brings others into question. So it's not just that little is known about these things, but it's that by using this, it will cause others to be called into question. And then extending and complementing existing literature. So, you know, taking things forward rather than saying nothing has been done. And any combination of these would work. And really what I'm talking about here is how you articulate this knowledge gap. So can you see that these knowledge gaps contain much more nuance and complexity? So as you read the, in the literature, think about how you can articulate that knowledge gap in a way that shows this kind of complexity. So let's have a look at the key points from this video. Think carefully about how you articulate your research problem and question the assumptions inherent in your concepts and, and in the research problem itself. Try to think further than the little is known when it comes to identifying a knowledge gap. And here's a source that uh, you can see I've referenced in this particular video, but is very useful in trying to think through research problems and knowledge gaps. Thank you for watching this video on problem formulation and gap spotting, which is part of our conceptualizing research video series.